Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to study good case study life class. You are all welcome. I want you to please indicate your name and your location where you are joining us from. Kindly indicate your name and your location. Let me know if you can hear my voice. Let me know if I need to speak louder. Let me know just before we go straight. Let me know. Okay. Okay. If you can hear my voice, let me know if I need to speak louder. Let me know just before we go straight. Let me know. Okay. I've seen, okay. I've seen some of us that have joined. Okay. Okay, so let me just welcome the, I've seen quite a number of people have joined us just before we start, just before we, I've seen, um, I've seen Rotimi, Rotimi Olatunji, Awoyemi, you are welcome, I've seen Adewuyi Oluremi, you are welcome, thank you for joining us from Lagos, I've seen Musumola Mary Ajayi, uh, you are welcome, Mosumala Mary from Ibadan. You are welcome. I've seen Anebo Anthony. You are welcome. I've seen Ima Ebon. Uh, you are welcome. I've seen Uchena Paul. You are welcome. I've seen Katrin Nwosu. You are welcome. I've seen Uchena Paul. You are welcome. I've seen uh, Semira Bisola Ajide. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Please let us know the location you are joining us from. Let's know the location. I've seen Taiwo Owolabi already. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Taiwo Owolabi already. Let us know the location where you are joining us. I've seen God's will. God's will. Thank you for joining us. I've seen Asha Williams. Thank you for joining us. I've seen uh, Ada Obi. Ada Obi Ume Asigwe Godwin. Thank you for joining us from Anambra State. Thank you for joining us. Taiwo Olabi is joining us from uh, Magboro Ogun State. That's great. Um, I've seen Adewuyi. He said I should speak louder. Okay, I'm going to increase my voice now. Okay, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can hear me, let me know. I've seen uh, Chim uh, Chim do. Ubaka, sorry if I didn't pronounce the name very well. You are welcome. Ubaka, uh, I've seen Celestine Nwoko. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you. I've seen Asa William from Jaws. Great one. Mike Eric joining us from Enugu. You are welcome. I'm speaking louder now so that you can hear me. I've seen Anamalu Epere. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. This is Tari Gold Case Study Life Class. Uh, my name, my name is uh, Awoyemi Taiwo. I'm the lecturer in charge of case study. Um, I'm going to, we're going to be going through what are the things that we should expect um, uh, as far as this exam is concerned. Thank you. I've seen some of our uh, uh discussions on the platform now let me quickly say this as soon as the uh the lecturers uh, suggested solution for the precinct is ready we'll try as much as possible to be ready latest by monday close of work i uh, will try to make it available to us on the membership platform admin will let us know how to access this and by thursday of that week uh please let's have a kind of discussion, a an extensive discussion. So please let's note it, let's block it on our calendar Thursday, uh Thursday, uh this week, a new week has started today. So Thursday of this week, we are going to meet uh by 8 p.m. in the evening. By 8 p.m. in the evening is going to be an extended class. 
we are going to be discussing what are the things that we should expect as far as this precinct case study. I've seen a lot of people coming out with different things. We're going to address all your concerns and fear on the platform as well. And we'll try as much as possible to make the suggested solution for the case for the precinct. We'll try to make it available by Monday, close of work. Uh, so that by Tuesday morning, people can start having access to it. People can start having by Tuesday morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining this live class for all of us. If I haven't mentioned your name, tell me Joy, Christova, Uchuma, Anego, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining this live class. Now, we're going to go straight to the things that we should expect. Please, as you are joining, please don't forget to have seen beloved Ita joining us from Aqua Ibom. You are most welcome. Now, please make sure you share the link. Make sure you share the link so that your friends can be a beneficiary. They can be a beneficiary of this. Uh, so quickly, uh, 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 again, like I've worked on, welcome to the class. So let's quickly go into the business of today to save time. Let's go into the business of today. The Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria, professional level case study, November 2021 diet, live class. You are welcome to this live class. Now here, I'm going to be discussing the things i'm going to be discussing the things we should expect i uh, call them examination tips like i've mentioned my name is taiwa Weyemi, the lecturer in charge of case study uh professional level so in this in 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 this uh why preparing what are the things i normally tell my student it is preparation is very important preparation is the bedrock of success now we have very few days or few weeks to the exam i need you to get this thing ready this has prerequisite these are basic things that you need to get ready as you prepare and these are the things that shows that you are really really prepared prepare for the exam because your preparation is as good as passing the exam. It's your preparation that determines your intention, whether you really, really prepare to excel and pass excellently in the exam. So the first thing I will mention as our practice is that you need to get your uh, things, you need to get your writing materials ready. You need to get your biro, your ruler, your docket, your calculator now you know this time we are preparing that is i'm talking about number one now uh, i'm talking this is I'm, I'm i'm on this number one get set that is what i call it examination tips get set so what are the things that you must get set get your biro ruler some of us we are conversant with some of this point get your docket ready because no matter how much you have prepared if you don't get this thing ready it can deter one's progress it can deter a student's progress so that is why we are emphasizing it make sure that the calculator you are using to practice you have a calculator you are using to practice have a calculator that you are used to to practice that is to solve all the questions you are all your ratios and all the calculation you want to do have a calculator you are conversant with don't start looking for a new calculator get your exam docket that contains your examination number you know that this exam you are not known and i'm saying all of this because of those that are writing this exam for the first time i'm saying some of these things for those that are writing it for the first time and some of us that have been writing it it is important for us to pay attention to this so that we don't make that mistake get your docket ready you know that the examiner doesn't know you by name they know you by your examination number and that is what they expect to see on your examination paper they expect to see that you ensure you write your examination number on all your paper so it's very important and i'm not going to belabor this point 
so get your writing material ready things that you are supposed to use a ruler for don't start using hand sketching to do it in the exam maybe you are you are trying to do, draw up a diagram and all of that you get your straight line get your ruler ready get your biro don't go with one biro go with minimum of three biro so that in case one stop working you have another one get at least three by rules so that in case you misplace one you are not likely to misplace all of them so get at least minimum of three by row, your straight line your docket and your calculator a calculator you are used to not a new calculator you don't know whether it's functioning very well or not now i will move quickly move to the next point i call the next point mental and emotional stability mental and emotional stability now for you to pass this exam for you to excel in this exam you need to be mentally and emotionally stable this is not the time you are uh, uh this is not the time so, in fact, this is the time to avoid anything that can affect your emotion or that can make you mentally unstable. So, it is very important. Some, for some of us, you may need to switch your phone. For some of us, you may not. You may have. You may. You may decide not to pick certain course because you want to concentrate. You want to give this exam all it takes you don't want family member telling you this 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 happened that can affect your emotion so and in line with that you need to make sure you sleep very well why do we say this every diet we say this because you know when you have a sound sleep it helps you to be mentally alert it helps your whole system to set and be ready for the exam so please i'm encouraging us Ensure that you don't overstress yourself. Ensure that you don't overstress yourself. Ensure that you don't overstress yourself. Especially a night preceding the exam. If the exam is starting on Tuesday, please, please, and please make sure you don't overstress yourself. Make sure you don't over have a sound sleep whatever you want to do you can now wake up early in the morning and do a quick brush up and check up and some of that some people don't even like to start reading anything on the day of the exam so that they don't get they don't they don't get agitated so please this is very important i'm not going to belabor the point please let's let's put it let's let's put this at the back of our mind you need to be mentally and emotionally stable to excel in this exam and that is paramount please don't overstress yourself don't fall sick don't do anything that can make you fall sick or make you feel feverish why you should be preparing and getting ready to write the exam please and please if possible avoid sleeping in where mosquito will beat you and if you sleep in where mosquito will beat you, please use probably mosquito net or something to protect yourself to make sure that you don't fall sick. We've had a situation of people that prepare, they've gone for lecture, but because they have overstressed themselves, they discover that they got to the exam hall and they are too tired to write anything. Some of them collapse in the exam hall, they could not write, they could not continue the exam, and that is failure automatically because they have overstressed themselves. So when they get into the exam, they are too tired to, some get too tired to think they cannot think and the exam require you to think and think deeply so please don't overstress yourself i'm saying this and i'm saying it emphatically because it's things that we have seen very well so they are the elementary things that you should get ready beyond preparing for the exam good you have read for the exam you have studied for the exam you have solved a lot of questions but please don't overstress yourself at least in a week to the exam don't do something that can make you be too tired to write the exam please i beg you the third point i put the third point be 100 percent focus avoid distraction and avoid panic please avoid distraction and avoid panic be 100 percent focus please this is the time to be 100 percent focus this is the time to probably say oh is it my leave if you need to take leave in the office for those that are working for those that stay in their family house or 
around people that are around their friends and family you may need to take some vacation and focus if you know your own you cannot read amidst your friend look for a quiet place to read if you know you can read amidst your friend please make sure you avoid distraction when you are supposed to be studying don't start discussing discussion and discussion please avoid any form of distraction or panic panic in the sense that somebody told you that i have covered syllabus 100 times i have covered syllabus 50 times this is my 66 times please that alone can create can make you to be agitated and panic please let's try to avoid anything or any person or anybody or any environment that can create panic for you because when you have panic it will not allow you to think straight it will not allow you to think aright it will not allow you to take the necessary decision please let's avoid distraction okay that being said let's move to the next point the next point say believe in yourself believe in yourself and it is called self-confidence self-confidence believe that what you know is enough to make you pass don't believe this is uh mostly this mostly happen to people that have complex problem what I mean by complex problem is called inferiority complex. When you start feeling that, oh, Mr. A has read more than me. Me, Sister B, or this, my friend, has opportunity of passing more than I do. No, it's not so. Please, that is why you need to believe in yourself. If you have ever passed any ICANN exam, believe that you can pass this one. If you have ever passed any school exam, Believe that you can pass this one. Believe that what you know is enough for you to pass this exam. It's not to say that you will not study more. You will not check all the things you are supposed to do. You will not do your revision. For some of us that have received lectures, for some of us that have gone through the, 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 the video lectures, you have gone through your study pack, this is the time to do a, revi a revision. Make sure that you know your onion. Make sure that definition is you are quoting it right I, I believe you understand what i'm saying so please and please i beg you in the name of god believe in yourself believe in yourself believe how do you do it tell yourself oh taiwo you can do it tell yourself if your name is fola your name is shino tell yourself shino you can do this femi you can pass this exam because we've had students that pass case study at a sitting. At a very first sitting, they pass it. So you too, you can pass it. There is no big deal there. There is no mountain anywhere except the mountain you create for yourself. Please, I beg you, let's believe in ourselves. Um, then I move to the next point. Next point say carefully read and pay close attention to all the instruction on the examination paper please 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 this is very important you need to carefully read all the instruction please don't assume that oh i have seen it before i have read it before i have done this before still take time to quickly brush through all those instructions because in a professional exam like this once you don't follow instruction the student is not likely to pass. It must be seen that you have follow every instruction given on the question paper. It is very, very important. Okay. Mm. 
ok ok so let's continue Okay, next point that I want us to please pay attention to is the required competence. Now, for case study exam, for this paper, the required competence at this professional level is analytical, intelligent evaluation of a given scenario. Pay attention to that word analytical. Your ability to analyze. Listen, your ability to identify the problems. Your ability to analyze the problem and evaluate it in order to provide solution. So, please, I want us to pay attention to this. Analytical, intelligent, evaluation of the given scenario and ability to exercise professional judgment ability to exercise professional judgment that is your ability to identify the problem your ability to intelligently analyze the problem and evaluate the problem and prefer a professional judgment Professional judgment is that is not a judgment that is sentimental. They say, oh, uh, you must ensure that your judgment is not sentimental. It's not based on your personal opinion. There are standards that guide uh, what and what should be done in this profession. We are expected to have familiarized ourselves with it and be able to provide a professional judgment to every issue, every problem raised in the raised in the case study. Okay. Uh, next point I would like to discuss is that we need to please first take time to read both the case study both the case study and the requirements of the question when we are reading the requirement of the question we are paying attention to specific demand of the question specific demand of the question for a fast reader please try as much as possible to read the case study the first time and the second time if you are somebody like me i read it i take my time to read it the first and the second time the first time, the first reading is for you to glance through and kind of familiarize yourself. Meanwhile, when you are reading for the second time, you are reading for better understanding, paying attention to key points, key areas in the case study. I believe this is clear. Now, let us move to time allocation time allocation one of the prerequisites for passing this exam is your ability to manage time we all know that you don't have the old 24 hour to answer to to sit for the paper you probably ask like maximum of four hours 
So what it means is that you need to allocate your time in line with the given time. Allocate your time in line with the requirement of the question because every segment of the question carries their own mark. Carries their own mark. So, please, let's ensure we pay attention to time management. It is because of this reason. I recommend that every student should go into the exam hall with a wristwatch. A wristwatch that is correct, that has been correctly set. The reason is this. You are not basing your time based on what the examiner is just telling you. You must have a wristwatch with you. You are using to check. You are using to check yourself. Have I exceeded time that I'm supposed to spend on introduction? Have I exceeded time I'm supposed to spend on, uh, uh, on, on, on executive summary? Have I exceeded time I'm supposed to spend on calculation? These are the things that we should check to guarantee our success in this exam. Now, time allocation. It is recommended that you should allocate about 50 minutes. 50 minutes. For what? For the reading of the case study and the appendix that follows it. This is very important. That is 60 minutes. 60 minutes. The next one, the next 50 minutes, the next five zero minutes is for planning and calculation. Some people will ask me, why do I need to create a whole 50 minutes for planning and calculation? The reason is that so that you will not exceed time allocated to each question that you needed to answer. Another example is that when you, uh, when you allocate time, the moment you have exceeded that time, you need to move on to the next thing on your agenda. It is very, very important. Planning require which, where, how do I start my question? Which type of English or method will it, be, will it be appropriate to use to start my sentence, my calculation? It's very, very important. That is why you see that a specific time has been allocated. Students are ex expected to... Students are expected to adequately plan and prepare. Pre part of preparation is O. Oh, if I'm asking question on internal control, answering question on restructuring, uh, amalgamation, merging, you must have you must have a proper strategy to go about it.
Okay, for those that are just joining us, once again, I welcome you to Study Good ICANN Case Study Life Class. So, let's proceed. We've just discussed about the time allocation, the time you need to allocate for drafting. The time you need to allocate for drafting of the report, for reviewing, Okay, so like we said, you need to create about 60 minutes to reading of the case study, 50 minutes for planning your calculations, which calculation is required, is, is needed for requirement one, which calculation is needed for requirement two, how you will arrange them, then we move next to the drafting of the reports. The drafting of the report, which is the which are the main requirements of the case study, which are the main requirements of the case study. Okay. We also recommend that you leave about 10 minutes to review. Now, this is very important. It is a professional exam. No student is expected to come and make grammatical blunders, spelling errors things that could have been avoided in the exam. That is why you need to create time to make sure that your, uh, your number, registration, examination number is correctly spelled. Uh, you need to make sure you cross your T, you dot your I, you, your pages, the pages of your answer script is properly numbered, is properly numbered, properly arranged. It's very, very important. Now, that will lead us to the next. So, please click on share to have a copy of this on your timeline. Click on share button on Facebook to have a copy of this on your timeline if you are just joining us again i welcome you to the live class please kindly type hello and in the comment box tell us your location so that we can acknowledge you in case you have any question kindly drop it on the whatsapp kindly drop it on the comment box kindly drop it on the comment box on the facebook thank you in regards to this diet i can exam what are your greatest fear what are your greatest fear? Kindly drop your comments on your on the comment box. Kindly drop your comments on the comment box. Thank you. Now, 
we are going to be discussing some common mistakes in case study. The reason why we are discussing this is that so that none of us will make the same mistake. None of us will make the same mistake. The thing is this. If somebody pass an exam, we need to ask, what has the person done right? If somebody did not pass, we need to ask a question. What is that person has not done right that did not make them to pass the exam? So, we are discussing this point just to awaken us to the common mistake that students make in the exam. Number one is lack of understanding of the principal or primary requirement of the case study and how to tackle it. If you look at the way we started, we say that please pay attention to your analytical skills, your evaluation skills, and reporting skills, which is communication. It is very important to, first of all, in every case study question, identify the requirement of the question. After identifying the requirement, then begin to provide solution to it. Lack of understanding of the primary requirement is one of the major core and how to tackle with them. Some people have read the day, but they don't understand. So it is very, very extremely important to seek to understand the requirement of the question so that you can provide the correct answer, the correct answer to the question. Okay, let, let us move to point number two. Avoid time wastage on calculation of financial ratio that are not required in answering the case study. It has been observed that some people spend significant time of the exam calculating financial ratios that are not needed or required in answering the case study exam. Please, let us try to avoid this. For example, some people will go ahead computing gearing ratio, stability ratio, some of the ratios that are not required by the examiner. And what this means is that there will be no mark awarded to such questions. The next point is ensure you label and explain your calculation in the appendices. appendix. Your appendix means your workings. Please let every student ensure that their workings are properly labeled. Number one, you should know clearly this number one. Number two, number three. Make sure, let us make sure that our, the pages of our examination papers are properly numbered so that our answers will be marked correctly.
Number three, we talked about inability or failure to prepare a good executive summary. This we are going to see in the next subsequent page. Now, I've even done an analysis for us to see because as far as this professional exam is concerned, executive summary carries about 20 to 25 marks on its own. And in fact, in some last diet, I saw that they specifically require, requested for executive summary of the case study. So please, executive summary happens to be one of the things that is easier to write. We just need to learn the, the tactics and the strategy behind writing a good executive summary. Next one, we are looking at the inability to differentiate external report from the internal report or hybrid report. Hybrid report is a report that combines the features of informal and informal letter. And like we know, a formal letter, a formal letter, uh, a formal letter is being written to the external members of the organization and a former a, a, a former external letter an external letter carries a disclaimer it carries a disclaimer why the former letter takes the form of internal memo there are some letters that combine the features of the two these are some of the things that you should pay attention to
Okay, let me quickly attend to some question. Modupe Fashakin Imo Eko asking question in report format there is no introduction but there is introduction after executive summary in report structure as seen in i can study Par. kindly clarify uh let permit me to postpone your question to the next discussion because they are part of the thing I will be showing us. Now, part of part of what we have put in this live class is that the format, and you see, you see, and that is the essence of this live class. This exam is about knowing the format. Under each the format, under each format. Okay, for example, you need to write cover page. What are the things I'm supposed to write under cover page? After cover page, what I'm supposed to write next? You're supposed to go to executive summary. In executive summary, what are the things that are there? So these are some of the things that by the time you know it, once you pick your question, begin to look for, pick those information and slot in under each cover page. And that is it. And that is it. So please, Modupe Fashaki, permit me to answer your question in the next discussion because you are going to see. So, so I'm going to suspend the question and come back to it. Okay, let me, I can see a berry, Asuru, say we were told not to come with wristwatch to the exam. Okay, please, if you have told, if, 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 if there is an instruction not to come to exam all with, um, with wristwatch, it's fine. I, I, I just don't know how you can check time yourself. I don't know, maybe there is a time they put, but just be conscious of time. You understand? So maybe during my time, they we, we normally go with a plain wristwatch, not scientific. So if they if they ask everybody, because I'm aware that phones are not allowed. I'm aware phones are not allowed. I'm aware, but I don't know if they have extended it to wristwatch. But but if they say it's fine, but just be conscious of time. Because if you monitor your time, because like what we did under the time allocation, you need to put a time so that if you are writing, if you are writing requirement number one, requirement one, you have two requirements. If you are doing requirement number one and you have already exceeded time, you are supposed to stop there, go to requirement two. Because the instruction on the case study say attempt requirement one and two and prepare executive summary. So if you see that you are wasting too much time on executive summary, wherever you stop, stop there. Go to the other one so that you can at least attempt. The word say attempt it. Make sure you write something on it. Make sure you write something on it so that you can get some mark. Because the moment you ignore it, it is tantamount to your flower. It, it looks like you have flowered the instructions. It looks that they have flowed the instruction of the exam. I think uh, Christopher Chukuma is asking which one is hybrid report. I'm explaining. Hybrid report is a report that combines the features of external and internal report. We know internal report. Internal report, these are reports you write to your boss, your colleague. But external report, these are reports that go outside the organization. Maybe you are writing to a MD of a client company. Or you are writing to, um, if you are writing to your board of director, for example. Now, your board of director, they are not people, they are not your, uh, they are not the people sitting down. So you still have to be formal in your writing. I don't know whether you get my point. You still have to be formal in writing when, when you are writing. But so, but 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 the thing is there. When you are writing, uh, you are replying that your boss has written you. So you need to reply your boss. So that one is 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 in, internal memo. So you are writing your boss. But when your boss say, "Help me prepare a report that I will submit to the board," that main report that your boss asks you to prepare, it has to be a formal. It has to be, it has to be a formal report. 
you are going to the, you are sending it to the board, the board of the company. You don't know them. They may be lawyer. They don't sit down together with you in the office. So, but all of this thing, we have dealt with it thoroughly in our class. I will still make mention of it before the exam. Remember, I said that we are meeting on Thursday to discuss some, some, some of the things we have seen and rub mice together and really, really get much get ourselves so some of the things we discussed in the live class we are not going to repeat it we that thursday that we are meeting on the telegram platform is is another board game we are fixing the exam we are putting ourselves real real in examination situation but we are saying that in between that time and between now and that time what are the team must i know what are the team must i get ready for this exam so I think I've been able to answer that question. Uh, the what what I what I meant by hybrid report. So I'm just checking if anybody asked any question. Okay, I think there is no more question, so we can quickly continue. I've said that module I will postpone your question till. Uh -huh. You see, you see in that life we do. What happened? He's come and record me. What's up? Has he reconnected? That's why it's my phone. That's why you need to remove. Mm -hmm. are, you know what? Mainly this one this has okay, disconnected, it's connected, but it's switched to this. Okay. So, you this one so it's too much for you to connect. Okay. Okay. So let's quickly continue. Uh, we are looking at the common mistake that student makes during the exam. We have looked at the lack of understanding of the primary requirements of the case study and how to tackle it. And we have said here that students should always look for the primary requirement, which will always be given. What are the primary requirements of the question? And how to tackle it uh, and how to tackle it because once you identify what exactly the examiner asks you to do then how to tackle it become uh not non-issue becomes non-issue now uh so the first thing is to identify it then profile solution to it we have said that uh, another one is the uh uh, time wasted that students should avoid time wastage on calculations of financial ratios that are not required or that are not needed for in answering the primary requirement and that's why we put it some some people have not uh, understood the the requirement they went straight because they have been taught in the class and they see that oh i have seen i've seen balance sheet i've seen income statement I, i've seen financial position and you see them they, they will just go straight start they will start to calculate a lot of ratios that are not needed please because if you calculate ratio you need to interpret them and you it they must be relevant to the requirement of the question so we advise students not to do this if you must calculate ratio calculate just few enough ratio to answer the requirement of the question 
Uh, that is that. Well, let's move to the next one. Next one is that ensure that you label and you explain your calculation. When you have a calculation in your appendix, you compute ratio, you compute um, maybe net present value or some uh, every, every requirement. I don't know. A lot of calculations, but make sure you label it and you reference it in your report, in the body of your report. You know that all your working should form part of the appendix and you, you should only reference them in your report okay inability or failure to prepare a good executive summary and you know that executive summary commands about 20 to 25 marks out of the marks awarded to the case study so it's very very important we have already taught this at uh, uh, in detail on our platform during during one of our lecture we taught this how to prepare a good executive summary some of us may need to go back to that lecture and review it some of it we are going to mention during, we are going to uh, mention it during this live class some of it will be mentioned again uh, uh, during our uh, telegram lecture uh, lecture on 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 Thursday this week okay so uh, next one we want to address inability to differentiate between external and uh, between external report and internal report and or hybrid report we have said that hybrid report is the report that combines the features features of external report and internal report internal report is a report you send to your boss your boss has written you in an email you need to reply that's an internal report that, that that's an internal report external report is that you are writing to a client or board of directors you, 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 your board of directors of your company. There is it has to the tone has to be formal. The tone has to be formal, and that is it. So you must be able. The one of the thing as you see the case, as you are reading the case study, you must be able to say, okay, what am I? expected to do which type of report am i expected to write is it an external report is it an internal report we have already shown told us different parameter that we help you know that this is an external report this is an a, a former this is an internal or external report so we're still going to mention it in the course of the lecture so let's continue uh next point we want to look at is the the ability to ensure that you integrate your key information from the working into your report what you are saying here not this number four is that ensure that you integrate ensure that you make reference to you did a calculation don't just do a calculation the calculation is standing alone then you are and you did not make reference to it you did not interpret that calculation if you have interpreted if you compute a ratio let's say profitability ratio or current ratio to be something you must interpret it and tell us how is it relevant to the case how is it relevant to the business you are analyzing remember a case study is about a particular company's business you are analyzing it so what you have computed using their financial ratio given in the question how is it relevant how is it relevant of what use you must be able to state this and reference it reference it in your report you must be able to state you must be able to state you must be able to mention it in your conclusion what conclusion did you draw from it in your recommendation so based on that ratio based on that calculation what 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 what, what, are, what can we deduce if you look at last diet we are asking students to uh, performance score card performance cost card so after computing the performance score scorecard so all those ratios how is it relevant how is it useful you must be able to interpret it link your calculation to your report you must be able to link it that is why even if you look at the question they will say oh kindly use use the uh, information in appendix one or appendix seven to to do this, to do this, to do this, they make reference to it. And that is the way which we should reference our solutions, our points in the in the case study. Okay, so let's move on. Next one say analyze and evaluate key information logically in your 
report and identify the critical decision factor. This is very important. After you analyze, don't forget that we said that one of the proficiency that is required under this case study professional level exam is, is are your analytical skill, are your, your analytical skill, your ability to evaluate that, okay, based on this, this, this that are Apple, what can we deduce? Then we said, we said that another skill that is required is your professional judgment, ability to exercise professional judgment, ability to draw conclusion and make recommendation and make recommendation that, okay, if there are if their reserve is this, if they are having negative profitability, or if they are, if they are, if they are, if they are, if the activity is resulting into deficit, or oh, what does it mean? What interpretation can you give to it? So these are some of the things. So we are saying here that you are you are, are, are ability to analyze and evaluate key information in every info in every case study. You will be given some key information. You must be able to logically analyze it. After analyzing it, evaluate it. Analyzing it that just like your computing ratio, just like any other, it may not be ratio now. It may be any other calculation. It may be that oh, net and uh, 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 what is it called? Net contribution. You want to know the net contribution or, 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 or of a particular product. You want to know whether a product is uh, profitable. You know, it could be net present value or net realizable value. It could be any other calculation. It could be break even. It could be sensitivity analysis. It could be any other calculation. We are saying that ability to analyze the information and, you know, evaluate the key information that is there. What do they want to use this information for? So, this is what you are saying. And after you identify what is the critical decision that the company need to take, that is that those are the things that will be under the recommendation. What are the, based on this fact and this fact, what are the critical decisions that the company need to take? So, again, we would like to remind us to click on the share button for you to have the copy of this class on your timeline. Okay, quick one. Another mistake is inability to use net present value. Inability to use net present value techniques. We all know what net present value means. That is, you did it under your marginal costing under your marginal costing approach. Marginal costing approach is the, the approach that compare the sales, the sales, that compare sales, that compare the sales, that compare the sales proceed, sales proceed versus variable cost, variable cost. That is the marginal costing. Why and, and the non-profit analysis approach. You know, so, um, and, and we have seen this tested many times in the exam because you use your marginal costing techniques or approach or net contribution techniques to make a short-term decision, to make a short-term decision. Because if a particular uh, revenue, stream of revenue is not making profit or is not making contribution, you should be able to advise the management of the company whether they should continue it or they should discontinue it. Next one is inability, in, inadequate understanding, inadequate understanding and interpretation of financial analysis using the ratios. Inadequate understanding and uh, interpretation of, of financial analysis using the ratio or trend analysis showing changes in absolute and percentage term. So what we are saying is that some students do not have adequate understanding on how to interpret their financial ratios and to calculate trend analysis. Look, most times you will be required to calculate the trend analysis. So this we have discussed in detail in our, uh, uh, in our live class and uh, during our telegram lectures, but we can still make mention of some of them as time permits us, so as not to waste time in this live class, uh, so, but make sure 
that you master the way of calculating your trend analysis, you will need it in the exam. And note that when you calculate your trend analysis, the variance, the deviation, you need to show it both in percentage and in absolute figure. So why you need to show that is that when you just leave it in percentage, some people may not understand. When you say revenue has increased by 7%, they don't understand. What do you mean? What are you trying to say? But when you say revenue has increased by 20 million, yes, they can relate to it. Remember, the users of financial statement, they are not all accountants. You may have lawyers, medical doctors, engineers among them. So they want to understand what you are saying. So if you are only talking in percentage, you have already fenced them out. That is why we are recommending that don't just limit your interpretation to percentage, but express it in absolute figure for everybody to understand as well. Next one is wrong notion. Wrong notion about SWOT and pastel analysis. What this is saying is that it's not in every question that you are asked to calculate SWOT analysis and PESTEL analysis. SWOT, as we know, it means strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. Why PESTEL is political, uh, ecological, sociocultural, technological, uh, environment. This is legal. L stands for legal uh, environment. So, these are the things that is not in every question you'll be asked to calculate. So that is why we said as number one, make sure you understand the requirement of the question so that where you are not asked to calculate SWOT, don't go ahead and start calculating SWOT because that's why I look at a lot of people. Listen, <clears throat> a lot of people will send you different suggested solution. It's for you to read it and you know pick what you need there by the time you will see the unseen the the unseen 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 part of the question there might be one or two changes that is why what you should go for is to go for understanding not cramming anybody's solution not that i want to cram this solution tell us how to write executive report let me cram it and go and put it down in the exam. No, professional exam does not work that way. It is very important. So somebody might have sent you solution, computing SWOT analysis, computing pastel. The question is that, does the requirement of the question, does it, is, it require, is it required in the requirement of the question? If the answer is no, then you don't need it. Then the next thing is the incorrect use of tenses, structure, use of appropriate word, and content, expression of professional skepticism. It is very important that students should pay attention to the use of tenses. Use of tenses, where you are supposed to use a singular tense, don't go and use plural there. Don't say this this is you know that when you say this and you write this type of this what's supposed to follow is this are or this where that is what we are saying pay attention to use of tenses you are not expected to come and be blowing incorrect english under this professional exam it's not allowed structure master the structure of your exam Master, the structure in form of, is it informal? Is it an informal? Do you want to use block paragraph or index paragraph? These are the things you should master what you want to use. Use of appropriate words is important. Don't come and be using slang in your exam. Don't come and be using abbreviation of a word that should have been written in full. Use of war is very, very important. 
don't go and come and be using big big grammar that does not fit in into where you are using them when you are using soliloquies uh different big big grammar no write in simple understandable english and let your handwriting be legible let your handwriting be something that uh, another person can read it and read it clearly it's very important another thing is wider content expression of professional skepticism so expression of professional skepticism is that be reserved don't jump into conclusion that because their quick ratio is negative their profitability is negative so the company will collapse no there might be other factors qualitative factors that will contrary disagree with what the quantitative factors are saying that is why it is important that you express professional skepticism professional judgment professional carefulness that is what i will call it professional carefulness don't jump into conclusion something the fact that they are making losses does not mean the company uh because profitability is different from liquidity a company may be making profit but they are not liquid and a company may be liquid but they are not profitable it doesn't mean they are two different things so this is where some of the area that we may need to express our professional skepticism our professional i know uh reservation is very important why that context is talking about think beyond accounting when you relating a matter when you are explaining a subject matter think beyond only accounting think beyond debit and credit think beyond how will how does this thing apply to the engineers in the company how does it affect operation how does it affect marketing department think beyond accounting that is what we mean by wider context think beyond immediate think beyond the present that oh this year they make loss what if they make profit next year what will happen in the next five years of the company that is wider context look at it from another perspective look at issues at another perspective that's what we mean by wider context Why that skepticism on the figure presented? Another thing is pay attention to ethical issues. Ethical issues will be given to you. You must be able to identify the ethical issues in the case study, evaluate them, and evaluate them, and also ensure you include a disclaimer, appropriate disclaimer clause in every external report in every external report So, again, if you are just joining the live class, I welcome you to the class. This is Study Gold, uh, live case study, live class. Please type hello and your name and your location where you are joining us from. I've seen people joining us from Portacourt, from Adamawa, from Ibadan. Please let us know the location where you are joining us. Type it in the comment box so that we can acknowledge you. Thank you. So in this 
regard to uh, in regards to this diet exam please let us know your greatest fears what are your greatest fear kindly drop your comments in the comment box let us know your greatest fear so that we can see how we can be of help thank you Ah, uh, another thing I would like to mention in this live class is your reporting structure. Please, all these things we are discussing, they are not for fun and they are not stories. They are the thing that you must imbibe. When you see somebody write a fantastic professional report in the exam, they did not just get there. There are certain things they have imbibed, they have practiced that help them to be able to write that kind of report. And this is a professional exam. Nobody will help you write the report in the exam. You have got to imbibe all of these things and be able to produce that report. And you can do it. You have the strength. You have the intellect. You have all it takes to pass this exam. I want you to be confident of yourself. So, this point I'm raising here, we are raising here, is not just a story. I want you to pay attention to them so that you don't go and make the same mistake. No matter how much somebody has read, if you don't follow what you are supposed to follow, that person will still not pass the exam. It doesn't matter how much you have written. If you go and make some certain blunder, it's not too good, it's not expected. That is why we are saying all of these things. And if you are not clear with anyone, please feel free to ask questions. And we'll be glad to, to provide clarification on them. Here, we are looking at reporting structure. Make sure that you have, you use appropriate headings. Your report must have headings. Your report must be legible. Legible means something that you can read, easily read. Something that you can easily read is legible. Don't write as if you are writing, um, 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 don't write as if you are writing in Arabic language. No, write something that somebody can read. I believe we get that. Don't write something that somebody cannot read. Even if you write in Arabic, you know that some people can read Arabic language, which is fine. But you know, this is exam. You must write something that somebody can read. That is, it has to be legible. Some people normally send their report to me to read. And I cannot read it. I cannot see what they are writing. Some place, I cannot see whether this position or positive they are writing i cannot see their letters very well and i'm like ah which time do i want to use to read this that is what i'm saying if as a lecturer i cannot read it how much more the examiner and they have a lot of marks a lot of uh, papers to mark so please it's very important even some people say it's, uh, it's, it's computer that will mark it even it is computer that will mark it if the computer cannot read your handwriting, how do you want the computer to help you? Another thing is appropriate use of paragraph. Make sure that you use paragraph. Some people in their report, they module up their report. They didn't put paragraph. This is not too good. It's either you use block paragraph or index paragraph. But make sure you put paragraph. Don't just write. No. Put paragraph. Let it help your job to be neat. It helps your report to be neat and easy to read. Next thing is correct use of page numbering. We are emphasizing this again. Make sure that your pages, some people say, but my answer script is already numbered. If your answer script is numbered, it's fine. But in your analysis, put SCBIT 1, working 1, 
working two, working theory, so that we can understand the flow of the working and put appropriate heading, calculation of net present value, calculation of financial ratio, calculation of efficiency ratio, put appropriate heading, so that somebody can relate to what you are doing while reading your report is very important. Use of suitable formal language is very important. Another thing is use of professional skepticism to determine quality of the information provided. Use of professional skepticism to determine quality of information provided by them. So, I have explained the use of professional skepticism. It don't jump into conclusion. The professional skepticism is to help you determine the quality of information provided. Has the information been audited? Has it been audited by the external auditor? Can you solely rely on it? These are some of the areas that you should look at. You should look at. Now, inability to ascertain appropriate strategic model suitable for the type of business analysis required in the case. You must be able to ascertain appropriate strategic model. Some people are saying, no, it is BCG, building consulting uh, group. Some people are saying it is BCG model. Some people are saying it is five quarters model. Some people are saying SWOT analysis. You must be able to read the question, case study, and tell us the appropriate strategy. Sometimes the examiner will not mention any particular model for you to use. They expect you that, but they will put certain things. They will mention certain parameters in the case study. That if you are conversant with your model, you should be able to say, this is the model they are referring to or they want me to use in the case study. So, please, let's pay attention to that. Ability to identify strategic model that is suitable for the case study. Where you are not asked, to use case study, please. Don't uh, to use SWOT analysis. Don't go ahead and start using SWOT analysis. That oh, because I don't know what to write. Let me just start writing it. No, it's not allowed. Next one is make a decision. Make a decision and state your conclusion. Under appropriate heading and subheading that links to the relevant appendix. Make a decision that is draw conclusion and make recommendation under each heading. When you are making recommendation, write it on this recommendation, conclusion, write it as a subheading and underline it. It's very important. It helps us to know where you start and where you are stopped. Make a, prat a practicable and commercially viable recommendation. We have cannot oversize this. It is very important that you make recommendation. It is one of the requirements that is expected. So please, let's try and make sure we use practicable and commercially viable recommendation. Commercially viable recommendation means something that has cost implication. Something that you can relate to monetary value. So, I will quickly talk on executive summary. Under the executive summary, what are the things that you require? You need to state the subject matter or purpose of the report. 
you need to state your method of analysis method of analysis under the method of analysis you can state for example that oh the method of analysis used in this case study include trend analysis vertical analysis as well as ratio analysis such as depth ratio current ratio profitability ratio etc state the summary of your findings after stating the analysis state the summary of your findings what are the things were you able to deduce from the case study next after summary of the key findings when we say summary don't repeat what is in the question verbatim as a solution reframe it you are not supposed to copy directly from the question and copy directly back as the response as the response to the case study or your finding next one is ethical issues and consideration ethical issue and consideration conclusion conclusion summary of problem you must be able to conclude by stating the summary of the problem you identify in the case study and you make recommendation what are the solutions to the case study next one is the main report the order of the main report under your main report make sure you have your cover page some people stay that under cover page they will have something like uh stadium under the cover page uh sorry i want that i said stadium instead of saying uh um, what is it called reference like table of content but this order this order is as demanded in the syllabus and some of it you see it in the your study pack the first um these are the key things that must feature in your report number one your cover page number followed by your executive summary your cover page must be followed by executive summary for you to write your executive summary and in your executive summary though we call it executive summary we said that your executive summary must be in the front but at the same time your executive summary at the same time your executive summary must be written last that is after you have gotten some information you have done some calculation you now have what to write under your executive summary some of the things under executive summary you will be able to write it based on the information given to you already some you cannot do it until you finish your calculation then next after executive summary now there was one of our students that asked this question modupe about what about brief introduction now brief introduction here under your report there must be a brief introduction and this introduction under this brief introduction is not for students to go and copy the historical background information given in the question you must be able to summarize the historical information you may be able to summarize in short words what the report is about introduction and we are going to see this uh in the suggested solution that will be submitted that will be put on our student membership platform we have said under that body of the report body of the report which under that you have requirement one requirement one 
after that you have the key findings and observation the key findings will tell you what are the things you have found out from the case key findings and recommendation followed by ethical issues or what you call ethical consideration what are the things that the company is not doing right ethical issues or ethical consideration next after that is you draw your conclusion draw your conclusion and draw your recommendation some people have asked can we combine the requirements one and two together the answer is no because in most cases requirement one will treat a different requirement different from what requirement two is asking for so we have suggested here that the requirement number one and requirement two should be different we have suggested here that there must be key findings and object and observations under the requirement two that is after you have stated the detailed analysis of requirement two you must be able to state the detailed analysis of requirement two then after which you draw conclusion you draw up your appendix uh, your recommendation and appendix you draw up your recommendation and appendix You draw your conclusion, recommendation, and followed by your appendix. This is the order that our report must follow. And we believe that if you follow this order meticulously, you will return with success in the exam. I will quickly go to those people that have questions. I'll quickly go to those people that have questions. Please, again, let's remember to share this live class so that we can have it on our timeline. Uh, wherever you are having fears, please let us know and drop a comment in the comment box. Drop your comment, your location in the comment area. So, I believe that we've been able to grab one or two things. And what we have done in this live class is to let us know the things. Even this order, there is a mark for following this order of the report. Your cover page, your executive summary, your brief introduction. There, is, there are marks for it. And that is why we are discussing things that are relevant for us to pass this exam. Things that you must know that are extremely essential for you to pass. And these are the things we have discussed. So at this junction, I would like to thank every, each and every one of us for taking time out to attend this live class. We are going to stop here for this diet and we'll continue the rest of our discussion on the Telegram platform. Like I said, we will try as much as possible by close of work on Monday to we'll make the, suggest the lecturer's suggested solution for the precinct question available on student membership area why we dedicate thursday for us to rub mind and discuss certain things that are not clear again i would like to say thank you to each and every one of us we would like to stop here and let's continue the rest of the 
discussion on the Telegram platform. Thank you very much. I remain my humble staff, Mr. Taiwo Awoyemi, your case study lecturer. Thank you for attending this class. For everyone that was able to join this live class and those that will still listen to the video lecture later, I want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, you know, looking forward towards this class. If you have any question or if I've not been able to attend to your question, please put it on the Telegram platform. I will attend to them uh, in good time. So, thank you very much. I want you to keep preparing. I know this diet, you will surely return with success and testimony. Thank you. God bless you.